So again, that represents the approximate actual y value at x. I think applying it always makes more sense than like this. You'll go back and be like, oh, like I could have pieced this together now that I've tried a problem. Before we look at an actual problem though, the use for this or where this comes into play is knowing if the guess we make for the square root, like so we had the square root of 81 example, and the square root of 82. We obviously know this answer needs to be greater than nine, right? Because we know that 81 is nine, so the square root of 82 has to be larger than nine. So these, this formula is going to either give me an over or an under approximation, depending on the shape of the curve. So this curve right here, the black one, is that concave up or concave down? Down, right? The tangent line's represented in red. Is that tangent line going to be larger or smaller than the actual black one? Yeah, larger, right? Because it's above it for everything. So concave down function with their tangent lines, we're going to have an over approximation. And then we're going to talk about concave down and concave up being unders or overs. So like I said, you looked at that picture and you determined that on your own. This is just the definitional aspect to it. The black curve represents the original function. The pink represents the tangent line. And if you look at the pink curves in a concave up function, they're always underestimates, regardless of increase or decrease. A concave down function, whether increasing or decreasing, will always be an overestimate. So, if you were given a statement and it said, will this approximation be an over or under estimate, your because statement needs to talk about what? <coughs> Concavity. So, I don't care about increase or decrease. If a question would ask you about an over or an under estimate, your because needs to involve concavity. So, consider the function f of x equals the square root of x. We know that the f of 4 would be 2, right? Square root of 4 is 2. We know that. But, without a calculator, how could we calculate something near the square root of 4? Let's say 4.1. So what we would do is go back to algebra and calculus kind of combined. So what we're going to do is find the equation of the tangent line for f of x when x equals 4. So what do I need for the equation of the tangent line? What do you think? The slope and the x and the y. Yeah, I need the slope and I need the x and the y. I'm given the x and the y. So that's my x, that's my y. I have a function, so what do I need to do to a function to find the slope? Yeah, we need the derivative. So in order to have the slope of a function, I need the derivative. So what is the derivative of the square root of x? 1 half x to the negative 1 half. What do I need the slope at? I need the slope at a particular point to find the equation of the tangent line for this problem. What particular point am I going to look at? When x equals 4. So if I'm x prime of 4. I have 
got the slope at 4, I have a y value of 4, I have the x value. So we're going to rewrite this a little bit differently this time than normal. The tangent line is y minus 2 equals 1 fourth x minus 4. We're going to approximate this at that 4.1. So we're going to kind of manipulate this to help you get there. So again, this isn't anything that we've done this. This is the old stuff. This is the old way. This is the old definition. So if you distribute it, it kind of simplifies to that. If you wanted to sort of see this out graphically, we know that the square root looks like this. So your point would be 4, 2. Let's talk about the new stuff. So the next sentence says, the tangent line represents the same function as f of x centered at x equals 4. We can now use this equation to approximate 4.1. So what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate the tangent line equation to be that L of x equation we got our definition for. So L of x... is f of a plus f prime of a at x minus a. So in this case, our a value is 4. So we're going to rewrite L of x with an a value of 4, which we already know all that information. So L of x would be 2. Plus, it's on the board too, so I don't have to actually look at it. One fourth x minus four. But now instead of an x, we're going to plug in that 4.1. So what we're going to do is use that linearization problem to find 4.1. So everywhere I had an x, I put a 4.1 in. So what's 4.1 minus 4? Point 0.1. So point 0.1 is a fraction, is 1 tenth. So 1 tenth times 1 fourth, 1 fortieth. So 2 plus 1 fortieth, 2 and 1 fortieth, if you don't really need to know what it is. So 4.1 has a value of 2 and 1 fortieth, this is going to be like 81 over 40, which if you want to know on your calculator, it's 2.025. That 2.025 is our calculus approximation for the value of the square root of 4.1. That 2.025 represents our calculated value for the square root of 4.1. That is what we predict f of 4.1 would be. So this 2.025 is what we predict f of 4.1 to be. Does that make sense? What shape is the square root going to give us? Concave up or concave down? Square, yeah, it's going to be concave down, right? Square root's going to be concave down. So a concave down is an over or an under estimate. Over. So this 2.025 is going to be an overestimate to the actual. The actual square root of 4.1 is So let's do it again, but now we're going to look at a natural log. So 
So find the linearization L of x of f of x equal to the natural log of x at x equals 0. So the linearization formula uses the letter A. So it kind of is irritating when you take problems in the book or you take problems from AP and instead of saying A equals 0, they use the X. How accurate would our approximation of L of 0 0.1 be to the actual approximation of 0.1? So what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to use linearization to find F of 0.1. So in order to do that, we need the derivative of F of X. So we can find the slope of the tangent at that point. So the derivative of f of x, which has been a long time since we did a natural log derivative, is 1 over u times u prime. So it's 1 over x plus 1 times 1. I need the slope at 0, and I need the y value at 0. <coughs> so you're going to find f of 0 which is 0, we plug in the natural log of 1, natural log of 1 is 0, and then you're going to find 1 over 0 plus 1, which is 1. So my slope is 1, and my y value is 0. So my approximation formula, L of x, equals f of a, which is 0, plus f prime of a, which is 1, times x minus a, where a is 0. So, strangely enough, at x equals 0, or a equals 0, our linear approximation formula is x. I know that a equals 0, so that x also equals 0, is x point 1? The x value we are finding is point 0.1. Okay. So in the case of this, it's point 0.1. That's what I said I super hate about the way <laughs> the problems are worded. Like, see how above it I wrote yeah. a equals 0? That's my biggest detest with these problems. So when you're like writing like the first line there of the L of X, you just plug in the A and then you can plug in the X like the Yes. Okay. And the X is the differential X. It's like the value that we're looking for. Okay. Which is I, that's why I said I hate the way these questions are worded. Yeah. And our textbook is old, so I think our wording is actually worse. And a lot of the stuff I do is from the textbook, so not the best homework. Yeah. But yeah. So we found it to be 